Hey there, folks. What's going on? It's Kodiak here, and today we are following another development in Core Pong. This is a little less structured of a video, no script, no nothing. We're going to be diving in to the lore and quest system that will be powering this game. And this is the first taste of this we've seen in Core Pong. And I'm really excited because there were a lot of people that were fixated on the gameplay systems, myself included. But part of that MMORPG thing is knowing the world around the gameplay systems, knowing the map, knowing the factions, knowing the reputations, knowing how all of those pieces that are good and gameplay centric matter, why they matter and who are the people pulling the levers um, in the world. So it's really exciting that we finally have a taste of that. And very quickly, I'm very happy with the artificial core team. They're releasing information very quickly um, and good fun info dumps that are really interesting to explore. So I want to start by looking at the actual blog post itself. This was posted on December 20th and read a small caption for you guys. The game evolves in a place called Quillot, which is just a small part of a huge universe. Quillot once was the epicenter of a huge cataclysm that changed all of creation. The aftermath can still be noticed in these wastelands. One can find anomalistic zones, forgotten ruins, and remains of devices that were once created by unthinkable technology. Once this place was home to an ancient, cutting-edge race of warriors, conquerors of the universe. Its mightiness was godlike, but nevertheless it tumbled and Quillot was abandoned. What moved its masters? What ruined them? And why now, after ages, are inhabitants of other worlds starting to appear on this deserted land? In order to find the answers, they will have to enter into some of the farthest corners of Quillot and gather bit by bit the truth of what happened a long time ago. But first, they need to survive. So it's really cool. These guys are kind of setting up this really, it's kind of like a narrative overview, if you will, a little bit of backstory about the world of Quillot and setting the stage for our adventure in Core Punk. And that's really cool because it's not overly grand. It's not massively complex. It's just a really simple concept to wrap your head around, which can kind of help you shape the expectation in your head of where are we in this core punk world. And that's really important for somebody like me. That's not super lore centric. I am more of a gameplay system guy, especially like end game gameplay systems, but it's nice to have that foundational lore. Just like world of Warcraft, I was following the lore to a point, but anything that was overly complex or overly deep or intricate was not for me. And that's not to say it's not for everybody, but it's nice to have this foundational base to kind of guide our experience in the game. Now, we were teased or, or revealed four factions that are in the game. I don't know if they're factions or races or, or civilizations. It's hard to say, um, but it's really exciting to see. I guess we could call them cultures. That's one of the terms that, that are used in the blog post, and I think that's a good way to think about them. So let's start with the Alanians. Now, the Alanian kingdom is described as this. That was born in the heart of a harsh forest, considers that they must be mutually helpful and close to nature in order to survive, since it is in the nature that the Alanians are able to find incredible power for photic weaponry. Now, that is a very wordy <laughs> two sentences, if you will. If I do say so myself, it's a little chewy. It's a little hard to, to speak out loud. But what the, the gist of it is, is this is some culture that is rooted in nature and their nature gives them power. Now, they've got this beautiful um, kind of sigil that has these interweaving um, lines that intersect, creating that kind of organic crosshatch that you see sometimes in complex roots and things like that. Now, on the poster itself, it says light bless the king. So this is clearly more when we think of nature, we think of light, we think of, of healing, we think of natural, obviously. This is kind of a combination, it seems, of like order and nature. And that's kind of what I get from the vibe of this poster. We see a crown on top of the white symbol there. And then we kind of see like what you would expect to see, like petals almost around the white sigil on the poster itself, almost wrapping around a flower, if you will. So it's really cool that there's this combination of light and and purity with nature and power. Now, I have no idea what photic weaponry is. I don't know if that has something to do with like photons. Um, I don't know what the word photic means. Now, of course, I could always look that up and you could too. But at this point, we're just going to let our minds kind of wander into what that actually is. So the Alanian kingdom, very cool light and nature, sorts of things like that. And then let's switch over to the next one, the Fadens. Fighting is life. Now, the Fadens are described as this. The clans of Fadens roam among the waterless deserts on mechanical devices and are in never-ending war with the bloodthirsty bigots and don't back down from the principles of honor and valor. Okay, clear shift away from the Alanians. This is a mechanized culture, almost like a wandering tribe type culture. 
that embraces technology and does not back down from a fight. You can tell just by looking at the imagery here, this is a very, um, not cultist, but a very rough, rudimentary culture um, that believes in sharp ness of character and strength and power and you can tell that from this imagery here you have kind of that distorted look um, all across this poster you've got these very interesting the sigil itself is very interesting you've got these curvy th like lines that go into horns almost all over the place and that's probably um, has something to do with the actual races that are part of the Fadens. I'm not 100% sure yet as, as we don't know but it's very cool you've got these brown and black and white earth tones um, kind of seeping through this entire imagery it just screams something is is in distress you remind you're reminded of the desert you're reminded of combat internal struggle and it's really cool so these guys uh, i think we may have seen a fade in or or maybe a character in the fade in culture in the trailer when they were riding on that kind of like mech walker through the desert and that's definitely the vibe i think the team is trying to go with here so moving on, let's talk about the Yorners. Now, the Yorners are described as this. They reshape Qualat with their power of steam and money. They transform lifeless glaciers into an engineering miracle of astounding scale. Now, it is very clear from this imagery, this is all about intelligence, engineering, the, the kind of spirit of creation. You can tell from the gear at the top of the imagery to almost like the, the mechanized elements of the interlocking circles on the bottom here that these guys are all about mechanics creation and you get that very there's a very rigid sense in here right this is a culture that believes that technology can solve everything at least that's the vibe that i'm getting um i i really do personally hate steam on that's a little hokey in my opinion that's just me um but i do like the idea of, of steam and money and i've always loved that kind of steampunk vibe that runs through a lot of what we see today now this is i think the beginning of a big trend of this whole cyberpunk core punk thing we see that with games like cyberpunk 2077 obviously with core punk and plenty of other games that are coming out in 2020 like bleeding edge things like that so steampunk core punk is not going anywhere this is a great way to tap into that with the yorners Finally, we have the Quadari. Now, this is a very interesting one, and I'm a little scared of these guys, not going to lie. The Quadari built on swamps, a community of limitless opportunities, but corruption, crime, and intrigues abound underneath their slogans of absolute freedom. Most of the population lives in dire poverty, and whatever its inhabitants have in savings is only spent on fashionable implants. The dirty slums glow and neon billboard now the quadari's line is obey or die and you can I, I honest to god this imagery is not something that i quite understand for the quadari um it, what i get from that description it's obviously a more detailed description than the other cultures is that this is kind of an underbelly society that believes that outward appearance is important and having that savings having that money is only supposed to be used to enhance your look to try and make yourself more um, part of society. And it's a really interesting concept. I, I, I'm very confused by the idea of absolute freedom being a core feature of these guys and then saying that everybody is in poverty. So I, it's hard to imagine. I'm thinking kind of a slummy type culture. I think we saw that in the trailer as well. We have the character walking through maybe a Kodari city or Kodari culture with that bright neon. So we're thinking everything is polished. Everything is shined, but there's no substance there. And I think that's what's so cool about the concept of the Kodari. Looking at the imagery, we see obviously we have this white section up top and this dark section underneath. And I wonder if that has to do with the actual way that the society is shaped. On the surface, on the top, we see everything is beautiful. Everything is glowing. Everything is great. But underneath, that is corruption and darkness and greed and that's kind of what i get from the quadari poster here it's interesting to see all of these concepts merge within the quadari culture you've got the griminess the grittiness but you also have the pomp and circumstance the bright lights the neon so it's very interesting to see how this one will all play out and all four of these cultures are very unique and very feel very fitting to the core punk world from what we know so far um, i'm excited specifically to learn more about the alanians and the Fadens. those are two type of environments that we have haven't seen um, a lot of obviously we haven't seen a lot of anything yet but the Alanians and the Fadens seem like they fit perfectly into the world in a little bit more of a, a niche or nuanced way and I'm excited to learn more about them while the Yorners and the Quadari are definitely more of on the nose in what core punk is right we've seen a lot of the imagery is very steampunky and that makes a lot of sense for the Yorners and of course the vibrant neon cities make plenty of sense for the Quadari so I want to know more about all four of them but specifically the Alanians and the Fadens who 
fit into the world in more of a nuanced way. So I'm really excited about that. Now, before we say goodbye, I do want to touch on the quest system, which the team addresses at the end of this blog post. Now, a lot of people um, are interested in MMORPGs because of quests. Questing is a big part of MMORPGs, character progression, and just player progression in general. So the team says this at the end of the blog post. In regards to quests, we are definitely on the same page with you. First and foremost, we are gamers. We love choice, consequences, unexpected turns of events, diversity, humor, including dark humor, and the story behind each character. Many of these characters successfully survive in Qualat, and if they are entrusting one to take care of some unimportant task, such as the extermination of rats in a basement, perhaps this is a trick, or perhaps this is a test followed by a real important task. We don't like quests for the sake of gold and experience, the chosen ones, moralization. In this world, there are no unifying morality. We do everything so that the quests become intriguing. We hope you like it. That's it for today, but soon you will find out a lot more. Stay tuned. So the artificial core team is basically saying as a, a warning shot to any players, hey, we hear you guys. We want quests to be just as engaging and as fun as we can make them and immersive as we can make them too. We are gamers first, and that is always a great thing to hear. Questing in MMORPGs can easily fall into like a checkbox system. Okay, we have a new zone. We need to check off 10 more boxes here. We need 10 quests. They need to do pretty much nothing, but we just need to get them done. And that's hopefully not what we see in Core Punk. And from what we just heard from the team, it doesn't sound like that's what we're going to get. So I'm really interested to see what you guys have to say about each of these cultures. Let me know in the comment section below which one is your favorite and what you think about each of them individually. It's really exciting to see new cultures, new ideas being merged and blended into the MMO genre. And uh, of course, let's get that discussion going right here so we can have a conversation in future videos. My name is Kodiak and from everyone here at The Game Gurus, thanks for watching and play on. Thanks for checking out the video. If you want to learn more about the game or just want to be part of an incredible video game community, join the Game Gurus on Discord. Be the first to know what's going on with the channel and interact with me and the rest of the team on a daily basis. To join, check out the link below.